So okay. hello everybody. Uh, welcome to another session of What Next to Do After BDS. And uh, today I have with me my junior, Dr. John Wah Fernandez. And uh, if I am right, he's a fourth generation dentist. So his grand grandfather has also been a dentist, and he's the fourth generation dentist in his family. So John Wah, a short intro about by yourself. Hi sir. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, that. So uh, one thing I am proud of the fourth generation of being a dentist, but uh, besides that, uh, I guess I'm happy I'm in this field. <laughs> so yeah. So uh, so when did you finish your uh, undergrad? So I graduated in uh, 2019. So that's uh, yeah. yeah. So what exactly are you this doing recently. currently? So this is for the people who are who are wondering about what different. Uh, there are options to do after the BDS. So, what exactly are you doing currently? So, I joined the course uh, in Savita Dental College, which is, okay. is uh, called uh, MS Implantology. So, it's a master's program for uh, oral implantology. Master's so, in oral yeah, implantology. that's what I'm doing now. Yeah, it's okay. a two-year program. I'm uh, I'm done with a year, and I'm into my second year right now. Amazing. amazing. So, how what is the total duration of this course? It's for two years. Two years, two years. So for people years, who yeah. are always wondering about implants, implant is actually a separate specialty. Although it comes under the postgraduate syllabus of uh, perio surgery and prosto, it's always considered as a separate, uh, you know, specialty. And uh, Jonwa here, after completing his undergrad, he's doing a special master's course in Savita Dental College, and he's in his second year. So how did you get to join this course? What are the requirements to join this course? So I uh, like when I approached the college, all they told me was that the requirement for this course was an interview and a first come first serve basis only. Okay. So like uh, by the time uh, I had made up my mind, I had gone to the college and they were just opening admission. So at that time, I just uh, sat for an interview with the head of the department. Okay. And uh, they just asked me a few basic questions like why I was interested, what my background was, uh, and I had to submit all my uh, uh, UG certificates and stuff like that. Okay. So after that was done, they told me they'll get in touch with me and uh, they did and that's how I joined the course. So, okay. So, so yeah. how many, on an average, how many implants do you get to place and are there any single tooth implants or you get to place uh, the other varieties of implants also? Okay. So the we, we place only uh, like conventional implant uh, placements only. So we do uh, cases like uh, the case can be a single implant case or a multiple implant case or even a full mouth case. So okay. it's basically whatever the patient, uh, whatever patient you get. So you take up the patient and you plan the whole treatment from the start. So in, if, even if the patient has uh, some other specialty work to complete, you, you do an all round planning and not just say, okay, fine, there's a space over there, place an implant. And uh, stuff like that. So we approach the cases uh, very differently. So in that, uh, so to address the question that you asked, how many implants? Uh, mm -hmm. Our quota is sixty implants. So we okay. place sixty uh, implants units. But one okay. patient may have a single implant, and maybe just a single anterior case or a posterior case. Some may okay. be like uh, multiple in the in a certain quadrant. Or okay. if you get a patient which requires uh, full mouth rehabilitation, whether it's uh, over denture, whether it's all on or whether it's like all six, six and eight or whatever it is. Uh, okay, based okay. on the, your treatment plan, you plan the number of implants in your place. So, and besides that, uh, if so the college has started placing zygomatic implants also. So if wow. you get a patient who is willing to, uh, to, to place, you can, you can just, uh, the patient, the patient is willing, we team up with the surgeons and we uh, place zygomatic implants also. So it's uh, like you comprehensively plan the treatment and you're involved in, the all the other aspects and so that you get to know how to plan for an implant and right from the basic step and you go until the prosthesis and all that right yeah 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 we, we okay. take up our own prosthetic work also okay and uh, you're taught about the impression techniques also yeah they, uh, so the thing is uh, since we are in implantology you know so from a to z of implantology we cover everything so, okay. in fact, the good thing about uh, what they have in Savita is that it's like uh, they've, they've, they've taken like the, all three specialty de departments, the surgery, perio, and the process departments. And okay. it's like a combined contribution from all the departments. So, even right from the stage of planning the case, where, uh, mm -hmm. like I told you, when we get a patient, 
we have to plan okay. it first so you mm -hmm. have to plan it and get the approval of your treatment plan from each of the department specialties so okay. in case they have anything to contribute and uh, they have any uh, thing any considerations about the case they will share those considerations and you uh, keep those in mind when uh, they can the case so and uh, that's how we have work. this that the cbct thing planning is also taught to you right like how to interpret a CBCT. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. so all our cases are, uh, are are done based on a cbct planning only so Amazing. we don't do anything based on uh, on 2d imaging so the thing is we have to take a proper it's very conventional the way you learn in that in, in the college so since it's an institute i guess so uh, you you have to take a cbct there is there's, there are two cbcts available in, in the college itself so you get the cbct in like 15 minutes then okay. we sit and we plan based on uh, the study model the pictures and the cbct so oh, yeah definitely. so how many implants have you placed so far so right now i'm done with 41 implants wow i've uh, yeah done like uh, two full mouth cases with amongst those 41 okay and uh, yeah i still so have two mouth, full more. mouth cases that's nice that's yeah nice. yeah and uh, do they follow a particular system of implants or you get to choose your system so when I joined in first year, they had only uh, Noble and Strawman systems uh, that they were using. Okay. So uh, recently, over the past three and three or four months, they've uh, brought in other systems like uh, Dio, Austin, Zimmer. So besides uh, Noble and Strawman, we also have these uh, three other systems on board. Okay. Uh, so what actually someone who's good at one system eventually gets to know the other systems also right so can you just put a word to the fresh yeah. students in case like it doesn't uh, make a difference of what system you use as long as you're well versed in one you'll be able to use the other that that's the foundation for everything but if yeah. you could uh, tell it out it will be easier for the people who are listening yeah so so essentially to place an implant like uh, the, the drilling and then the placement part is uh, like even the, your dealer will come and tell you what you have to do like if you want to even move a, a branch out to a new system, if you have some experience in placing implants, they'll tell you, okay, these are your drills. And if you're placing this size of implant, you have to go to that size of implant. But uh, one thing uh, I, I sort of like, uh, because now that they brought in more systems and stuff like that, there, mm -hmm. there is a little bit of uh, like uh, getting to know the, those drills kind of thing. Because uh, sometimes if it's like a straightforward case or anything like that, you don't have a problem. You, you follow whatever you, the, the catalog says. You do the drilling okay. and do it, but then in some, in like uh, in some systems, there are multiple drills, drilling sequences before your final implant size. In some sequences, like like say Strawman or something, there's only two drills before your basic smallest implant size. Correct. Correct. So if Correct. you want to under prep, if you if you want to under prepare the the osteotomy side, like the drilling side, or if you want to do something else, then you need to have that in mind and uh, just be aware of the different systems and how they how much they are cutting and. So each system has their own science behind that drill size to implant size, uh, uh, this thing. Yeah. So, so it to an extent it just gives you an exposure. But uh, okay. like you said, it like you do one case with that system, you will get to know uh, get to how know that system the works. Correct. Yeah. So what exactly is the degree which you earn after two years from your like how uh, right so now I get you're a master's. A, uh, right now you're a yeah. BDS. So once you're done, with it, you get um, no after B. So you. For after Dr. Jonwa, it's BDS followed by. I get a master's in oral implantology. So it's Ma they they the degree is an MS. MS, MS degree. MS. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's a master's in oral implantology. So it's a degree that is uh, by by Savita University. Okay. It's uh, not it's not uh, recognized by the DSA, meaning you can't go get it registered because uh, like implantology is not a specialty recognized by the dental council. So, Correct. but it's a, it's a degree by the Savita University. But so, definitely yeah. implantology requires a formal training, right? So that uh, when you're yeah, more confident that, when you That was one thing that I realized, yeah. Correct. Yeah. And uh, what uh, made you want to do an implantology? You could have done an MDS. You could have done any other course, right? Just uh, like the uh, so, factors <laughs> which made you choose yeah. implantology. Yeah, so that was actually like a whole uh, sequence of events because uh, I was pretty sure that I wanted to do an MDS only. In fact, I wanted to do it in oral surgery only because okay. uh, that was where my interest lay. And then like, like I was like, no, I'll make a, a like, main I, I, like I, I don't know, I, like until the end of internship, I feel I wasn't uh, 
like think of anything else then towards okay. then i started like seeing uh, uh, where i'd be after doing after finishing my pg like what i would take away from those three years of doing any one of those specialties when okay. i started i think at that time i really started thinking about it properly so then personally i felt okay fine uh, i was looking i started look at even options abroad so i do have mm-hmm. my family uh, like my my father is right now practicing in athlone so okay. that was there so like i it's i'm a, i'm coming from a background where i do have a practice to uh, take correct, over correct so correct. Uh, but at the same time i was in terms of like uh, taking dentistry forward and seeing where i want to be in the future i, I even considered going abroad i was looking at canada okay. but uh, weighing out my options and the fact that uh, this is like home turf no chennai like <laughs> i've grown up over correct, here correct, i made my decision correct. to do something in chennai so okay. since I, then i decided i want to stay in chennai and do something with the practice of yoga i started thinking like what i can bring to the practice uh, after my three years so personally i felt that uh, i was confident with my uh, basic general dentistry clinical skills to okay. like take up most of the procedures so if i okay. could specialize in something which was all in confident like in terms of uh, handling soft and hard tissue so i okay. know to handle i was confident in hand, handling everything superficial so anything which you have to raise a flap or handle the soft tissue handle the post op healing anything like that i was uh, so then uh, people suggested uh, implantology and that and in fact uh, i was started looking at courses and i didn't think there would be a course uh, uh, like i i knew of all these module courses for implantology right. which right. i wasn't too convinced about so okay. those were like and they're quite expensive also in my opinion because they they charge quite a bit even for uh, just like uh, uh like like they have different modules in a year and you only okay. get to place about five implants they just cover correct, what correct. you have to do on the theory behind it so in fact i was looking abroad also for these masters programs or some kind of uh, post programs in implantology and that's when uh, a friend said she came across this program and okay. she suggested why don't you take a look at it and that's how i uh, started looking into this program then i went to the college saw the facilities and then so i had no idea even though it was like <laughs> i studied in ramachandra and savita was a right correct, corner, correct. i had no idea that uh, i mean the sort of uh, department of facilities that they had over there True. so it's only later on when i i found out about this i went and looked it up and then i spoke to a few of the the, the students over there at that time and they told me what all they what kind of work they did and what kind of uh, like uh, all, all the opportunities they got to do and what kind of cases they were seeing so then it seemed interesting so i was still very skeptical until i started in fact until 3 uh, months or 4 months into the first year because uh, like no one else like every time you tell a person you're joining something new like this because in everyone's head after ug it's like okay when you have to do an mbs <laughs> if you right, want to be right, anywhere right. in life or something like that that like a that like so a so i was getting like really hmm. yeah yeah because all your peers are like uh, what are you doing some of them won't say it out loud but you can see that they're thinking it and then you are also thinking it partly because you you're not sure of where you're going but uh, so personally uh, i feel now after one and a half years almost one and one year and few months into it that i made the right decision because i see myself personally based on my uh, uh, my my position and stuff like that i see that uh, i can make something out of this so in that way i'm happy that i've chosen this uh, course i'm sure uh, you will make a difference do not worry about that uh just speaking to other yeah. people who are doing different things right like my batchmates and all and all of them agree to one fact is that there is scope in everything you do it's just like how you are going to utilize whatever you have learned yeah. and put it into practice that's it there's nothing like this as high Agreed, as scope yeah. this as low as scope. uh before i conclude two important questions uh one is i just want to know how much do you have to pay as a fee for this couple of years and do you have any thesis work to do or uh, research activities in these two years Okay, so uh, my course fee for this uh, this the two years is seven lakhs a year. So okay. I pay the total. I'll I'll pay the total of fourteen lakhs. And okay. uh, besides that, uh, uh, there's a requirement besides the the implants that we place, the sixteen implants we place. Uh, okay. There is a quota for uh, uh, like doing short studies every year and okay. completing a thesis. Okay. So the requirement is is that we have to finish uh, five short studies a year. like we have okay. to do some sort of project some sort of experimentation something it can be anything uh, okay. and then we have to complete that study and publish it also so okay. and then besides that we have to cho- choose a thesis topic that we want to uh, take okay. up and we have to complete that and 
and finish it and publish it by the time we leave uh, at the end. Okay. So yeah. So thank you for spending your valuable time and uh, just for thanks for having who, me. Yeah. No problem. No problem at all. For someone who's wanting to know a little more about this, what would you like to say them? Uh, what would you like to tell them about the course? Short and sweet. Like someone says, I want to go to a master's in uh, implantology. What would you like to tell them? Like what they can expect and what they can benefit out of it. I know you have just to sum up so, what are your thoughts. To sum up, whether or not you should, uh, whether or not you think you're interested in implants and stuff like that. Abhi, <laughs> look, <laughs> if you have like. They are sometimes very skeptical about to join a course, what what others will think, whether whether uh, how this is going to uh, help me or something like that. So that's it. Uh, in that way, uh, you have to honestly like uh, I think from what I learned from the whole uh, confusion I had after finishing BDS was that uh, instead of seeing uh, just looking just purely into what you're uh, interested in and stuff like that, you have to take that into consideration as well as what you're going to make of it after. So okay. you should also see whether you see yourself in clinical practice or whether you see yourself in teaching or whether you see yourself in research or uh, whatever it is or whatever opportunities you have uh, with you at present. Take all those into consideration and look at the bigger picture and uh, decide what you want to do with the, uh, your further studies. So okay. Okay. in that way, if you plan in that way, and, and don't take in peer pressure saying that uh, you can't uh, make it anywhere without uh, a postgraduate degree because correct, that, that was my impression at the end of uh, my undergraduation because that's all everyone would talk about like you have to do something and it has to be only an MBS but then yes, I spoke yeah. to uh, like like a lot of people love that one good thing is just keep speaking to a lot of people because like anyone is uh, I found that you just want to ask anyone and you want to speak to them everyone is uh, very approachable so everyone is every all the dentists in the field are willing to share their uh, experience and how they got there and stuff like that. So and then you learn that a lot of people are making it out there and are doing stuff without. Uh, I mean, even by choosing other non-conventional uh, uh, paths for the thing. So in that way, uh, yeah, just uh, follow what your mind is telling you and your heart is. Oh, <laughs> thank you, thank you. So how is your sprinting going along, athlete? I, that that is uh, on hold only. <laughs> yeah, those are only in the days that you were an intern. <laughs> <laughs> Not anymore. Yeah, or yeah. probably a temporarily a break because of the pandemic, something like that. Probably yeah. <laughs> anyway, thanks, Jonwa. It was fun talking to you. Thank, Thank you. you. Hope the well, people yeah. watching this uh, have something. So, and is it okay if I share your email ID in the video so that people can? Uh, uh, mail you. Yeah, sure. Queries, I can do that, right? Sure. Yeah. I actually have an Instagram page also in case they want to follow it and uh, sure, they can sure. DM me over there also. Definitely. So uh, it's called Implantagram. Uh, okay. I will yeah. send the link or attach a screenshot to it along with this video. I'll do that. Sure. I, I, I'm yeah. following your page. I'm following your page. Yeah. I'll do that. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Jonwa. Bye bye. Welcome. Yeah. See you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye.